the panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and participants, welcome to our International Women's Day panel discussion. Welcome to our special invitees here today, the students of Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Today we gather to celebrate the achievements, resilience, and indomitable spirit of women across various spheres, particularly in entrepreneurship within the context of a developing nation. The theme for this year's International Women's Day, Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress, encapsulates the essence of what we aim to explore today. As we delve into the stories and experiences of our esteemed panelists, we will uncover the many trials and triumphs that have shaped the journey of female entrepreneurs and the genius behind policies which directly invest in females, as investing in women has tremendous multiplier effects for our economy, our society, and our families. In our midst, we have extraordinary women who have dared to dream, dared to challenge the status quo, and dared to carve their paths in the often treacherous landscape of business. From innovative startups to established enterprises, they have navigated through with courage and boundless potential. But our discussion today isn't solely about success, it's about the journey the obstacles overcome, the barriers broken, and the lessons learned. It's about acknowledging the systemic challenges that disproportionately affect women in entrepreneurship, be it access to finance, their networks or resources, and finding solutions to create a more equitable playing field. As we embark on this dialogue, let us reflect on the responsibility we hold uh, to foster an environment where every woman, regardless of background or circumstance, can thrive and contribute meaningfully to society. Let us celebrate not just today, but every day, the strength of women. Thank you once again for joining us on this auspicious occasion. May our discussions today inspire action, ignite change, and pave the way for a future where every woman's dream is within reach. I would like to introduce our moderator today, Ms. Monde Lewis, who will take us through today's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Daniel, and um, thank you, St. Lucia, for joining us for this 2024 Export St. Lucia and Ministry of Commerce panel for International Women's Day. This mm -hmm. evening, I have the pleasure of introducing and interviewing uh, for beautiful, strong, talented women who dared to do this on their own, to step out and to really develop um, businesses, like CEO said, in this really treacherous business world. Um, as a businesswoman myself, um, I speak from first-hand experience, and um, you know some of the stories here today, I'm sure, will remind me of my days <laughs> in the trenches. So with no further ado, um, I would have our participants, our panelists, introduce themselves, starting from my immediate right. Okay. Hi, so I'm Christine Samuel. I, my brand is Christy Creation. I'm a retired teacher, dancer, and now an entrepreneur making bags. Thank you and welcome. welcome. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Shonda Labiola Alexander, and I am the founder of Abby's Exotic Blends, where we create Vegetable chips, punches, condiments, and snacks. We're located in the Carrillac building in San Susi. Thanks for having me. Good day, I'm Kriya John. I'm the owner of Crease Catering, and I also have three other businesses, which is Crease Events Planning and Decor, Crease Grab and Go, which was launched last year, and I'm also the marketing manager and co-owner of JC's Honey Production. Oh, wow. I'm from beautiful and wonderful town of Beaufort. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. My name is Lisa Sharma Springer. I am owner of Mona Lisa Hand and Body. It was a beautiful venture for me to open Mona Lisa Hand and Body as a spa. I do massages, manicures, pedicures, nail extensions. We also do waxing. 
and it's like coming underneath one umbrella and getting everything done. So you walk in and you get everything that you don't have to go anywhere else. Okay, thanks for that, um, Lisa and her one-stop spa shop. Um, but Lisa, since we we're on you, could you tell us how, how did, what inspired you to open your business? Okay, um, in 2020, COVID came, oh. as we all know, and um, it was a little challenging for me because I lost my job, mm -hmm. obviously. And, um, in October of 2020, our opportunity to give hand. My husband um, decided, okay, he's gonna invest in me. I was doing people on a side, like my clients going house to house, doing clients here and there, when the country finally opened, and I decided to open my spa. Okay. Yeah, but it was a small spa. I was only doing massages at the time, and only manicures and pedicures, and um, yeah. And now you do everything. Now I do everything. <laughs> so um, was it that you already had the skill to, yes. to expand? Yes. I, I've been a spa, spa therapist for over the tw past 21 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I started as a nail technician, but I moved into massage therapy okay. and waxing, facials, and all of that. So, 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 I, so could we say COVID provided an opportunity for you? Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> nice. A wonderful opportunity to to step out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, okay. yes. It was a big leap of faith for me. Sorry. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Uh, and I, I know a, a, a number of people also share a similar story. Um, and I guess the takeaway from that is during the adversity, there's always... There's always a silver lining. Yes, indeed. To overcome. Indeed. Yes. Thank you for that. And um, I'm sorry, I will call you Abby because I really thought that was your name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, Ms. Shonda, please, um, many of us know you for your delicious snacks. We, we know, uh, probably people call you Abby too, I don't know, but I call you Abby. <laughs> That's um, the name on the streets. <laughs> uh, but tell us again about, um, about your journey, and I know I remember seeing you at the MSME Grant Loan Facility and, and really listening to that awe-inspiring journey. Um, and you're here with us today and we're celebrating, so please. Um, somewhere in 2009, I became a single parent. And um, that was a push for me because I had to decide whether I was going to fall or whether I was going to get up and run. And um, I sat down one night, I got my pen and paper, and I wrote down all the things I thought I could do best. And everything was in the kitchen, in the household, of course. And I decided to start with $2 planting. And, <laughs> and I purchased my $2 planting. I went home. I St. Lucians have heard this story so many times. Um, I fried my, with a knife, I sliced my planting and put them into the ice lolly bags, tied them up and stick them on the door. And they all sold out. The very first day, I went back to town the following day, I bought $5 plants. <laughs> <laughs> I purchased $5 planting and it all sold out. And then day number three, um, everything I've done, it was not intentional. Mm -hmm. um, people, customers pushed me into it. Um, I had, I suffered from migraine headaches terrible migraine headaches. So I went into town, I bought $5 planting. When I got home, I got off the bus and I told my son, I can't see, my head is hurting me so bad. Um, I gave him the planting, I asked him to put it in the fridge and he put it in the cupboard. <laughs> so I went to sleep and I couldn't get up. So I woke up next morning. And when I went to check on the planting, they were ripe. Right. <laughs> so, I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I tried it anyway, because ripe planting is really good. Everybody likes ripe planting. So I decided, okay, let me try this. And I tried it. And guess what? So loud. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how I started with um, the ripe planting chips. It's not something I knew how to do. It was a mistake that really boomed. And um, today we supply 1,500 pounds of planting on a weekly basis. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. 
um, I will move to my immediate right. And uh, I mean, she needs no introduction. Anyone in St. Lucia who does not know Christine, Christine Samuel, Boy. where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. this is a, a new phase of your life, should, should we say. Sure. Um, and, and tell us what... Well, what the people who know me, they know me as a dancer. Yes. So you're talking about 45 years of being a dancer. And in 2016, I knew it was time for me to wrap up because there was so much things happening around me that didn't allow me to continue the dance. I had my own dance school, dance mm -hmm. company, invested millions. And then in 2016, I fall up as a teacher slash dancer. And then I decided, okay, what am I going to do next? Um, the trial started with not having anything to do for the summer because, you know, I taught children to dance every summer and nothing was happening. Children and I, you know, I decided to go to town and then I decided, okay, they have some fabric at home and I'll make a bag. I made one bag. I called a friend of mine and she said, I said, I made a bag. She said, Auntie Christine, you made a bag? I said, yeah. And then that one bag, from all the excitement of that one bag, I went to town in the afternoon at Stardust and I bought fabric got back home and I made eight bags. And whole and beyond, those eight bags have developed to what it is today. If you only see the first bag, you will never believe <laughs> <laughs> that I would have been making the kind of bags I make now. Yeah. I mean, the bags are all over the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. All yeah. over the world. It, it has been nine years since I've been making the bags and I don't think I'll turn back. No regrets being a dancer, but this is the most phenomenal thing that has happened to me. Seeing every woman wearing a Christie Creation brand, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. Fantastic. <laughs> that, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, and Kriya, you know, I, I left you for last because you multi-talented. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have several businesses um, under your belt. And please, take us through your journey of entrepreneurship. OK. Um, I first started entrepreneurship in, I would say, in my mom's kitchen. I was going to school, and for me, it's always, I'm going to make my own money. <laughs> so I started baking um, little cakes, started at taking what's in the kitchen, baking, and saying, I'm going to sell it at school. Put this in my bag. I would leave the school books in the school, but nobody <laughs> knew what I was coming to school with. And uh, I started baking little cupcakes, going to school with it, buying sweets, going to school with it. Um, also, I got to be friends with most of the boys in school. And during the free time, they would want a classroom or some place where they can play games or a dice or cards so that was me bringing it in knowing because i gotta make the money Th that's have always been my passion always i need to do something to help somebody out and after that i went into um, finding a job after school my first job landed at um, party shack it was a jamaican company came to view for it and they needed a baker and a friend of mine told me about it. I was skeptical a bit because I wanted to try something different. So I said, okay. I went, started working there. I learned the Jamaican way of doing bakes, doing the fish cakes, the Jamaican soups, um, the cocoa tea, the style of making it. And all of that inspired me. After when they said they were closing down to castries. I made a decision to go straight into the hotel, into the hotel industry, and there were two options, either being somebody on the floor serving the guests or the person in the kitchen, and I chose the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And everybody wonder why, for somebody who has that spirit in them, why I want to go to the kitchen? And being there, working there, learning the different techniques, styles, I decide, okay, there are persons who want this um, feeling, but they don't have the money to come to the hotel to have these dishes, the mm -hmm. meals, the cakes. And uh, I decide, okay, I'm going to 
when the company when the company said they were making some changes in persons in the kitchen I went on vacation and I decided let's take the shot nice so from then I've started and I can see now I'm very proud of what I've accomplished what I've accomplished because a lot of persons being a young person they would tell me I would not make it mm -hmm. especially from Viewfort. Mm -hmm. When I tell people I'm from Viewfort, persons would tell me, you from Viewfort? You sure you from Viewfort? <laughs> I would l watch on Facebook for every course, every thing they had, and trust me, I would be there. I would call, I would, if the money is $600, I know I have six cakes, I'll multiply the money I have to make to reach there. It can be wherever, what time, I will be there. And with that, I must say, I have that drive and that potential. And I always say, you have to be self-motivated. Right. Most important. Yes. Most important. I mean, very inspiring here. And thank you. Um, thank you for that contribution. And I think a thread that I got from everyone's contribution is that there was something that you needed to do there was you were at a point in your life that you had to make a decision and um, I think I heard that from all of you really in terms of your transition into entrepreneurship and I'm Kriya I will go back to you 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 know you spoke with such confidence and um, you seem to have always believed in yourself but with all of that belief um, I know the opportunities that we spoke of they they probably were few and far in between how did you overcome some of these obstacles that that would that presented your presented itself to you during your your your, your quest for entrepreneurship um i would say with all of the struggles and trials i would sit down reflect on okay if i go for this opportunity and it's not been given to me what next and what else should I do? Mm -hmm. So no matter you have, I had this goal of wanting to do this particular thing, I would sit back and say, okay, it was not my time. It was not for me. And throughout this, I have had my broken days where I would say, why, why am I not getting the opportunity? Why isn't it not for me? I would sit back, yes, there are times I would cry, I'll break down and say, I'm giving up. But I must say, one thing that inspired me through it all was, I'm from Viewfort. And persons would say, if you're from the ghetto side or from the, this particular place, you will not make it. And there's one thing that pushed me, that I'm from Viewfort, especially from the area that I was brought up, that I have to make it. I must show persons and show the world that no matter your background, no matter where you're from, you will be that shining star. And you will put the place that you're from on the map. Wow, okay, wow. I think um, this is a, a good time for us to take a break. I might need to dab my eyes a little bit. <laughs> um, but um, thank you for that contribution, Kriya. And um, St. Lucia, please stay tuned with us as we explore these mighty women for International Women's Day. Please stay tuned. Export St. Lucia is the National Trade Export and Promotion Agency of the Government of St. Lucia. By spearheading the island's national export development efforts, we work toward continuously increasing the value and volume of St. Lucian exports. At Export St. Lucia, our team of qualified trade professionals promotes and expands the presence of St. Lucian goods and services across the globe. 
We offer a range of services including the provision of up-to-date trade information, trade promotion and export marketing, export facilitation and export development support. We provide invaluable support to our clients including small and micro enterprises at absolutely no cost. After all, through our work, the agency aims to increase the profitability and sustainability of St. Lucian businesses. Export St. Lucia is making a direct and tangible contribution to St. Lucia's economy. Over the past 10 years, Export St. Lucia has transformed the trajectory of several businesses founded by passionate entrepreneurs with the zeal to achieve more. We look forward to each new export and the opportunity to introduce a wider audience to top quality, authentic St. Lucian products. This is why we embrace the philosophy of excellence at home and abroad. For more information, contact us at info at exportsaintlucia.org or call 1-758-468-2145. Happy International Women's Day to all our women in St. Lucia, especially our business women, our entrepreneurs who have made us proud. This year's theme for International Women's Day is Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress. And I must tell you that this theme confirms and echoes the philosophy of the Ministry of Commerce and the Government of St. Lucia. We have proven this in the programs that we've had within our MSME Loan Grant Program, where our women have been given an opportunity to thrive. When we think of our digital program, where we try to bring our women up to date in terms of e-commerce. When you look at what is happening within the Ministry of Finance and the Prime Minister with our youth economy, where again we are supporting our young persons, especially our women, to seize the opportunity to move forward. Our business women in St. Lucia have made us proud. Whether it's in the area of tourism, when we think of persons like Mrs. Destan, who have paved the way, Mrs. Buffer Pal, when you think of Sufre, uh, Mrs. Eroline Lamontine, when you think of persons in other parts of the community, and I think in the manufacturing sector, I think of people like Mrs. St. Rose, who've been a model a role model for us in the business community. So today, I salute all business persons, especially all of you sitting there in the studio. You've made progress. I think of what I have seen in terms of Mrs. Regobert from moving from one level to the next level. I think of all the persons doing the tamarind boards. Now I see, with the help of Export St. Lucia and Ms. Daniel, you've got new packaging. I see us doing things, whether you are a vendor, whether you are a seamstress, participating in our fashion uh, economy, whether you are somebody who has an idea and is ready to thrive. I tell you, we have women who in the business community will now only be business persons. They are also role models, being parents, being mothers, fathers, partners. Essential role in keeping the fabric of our society together. So today, I need to tell you, as the Minister for Commerce, I'm extremely proud to be your minister. And I can tell you, and today I commit to continue working with you and for you, so that together we can rise. Together, our economy can rise. Together, we can transform the lives 
of our children, the lives of our families, and together we can have a better solution. So I join all of us in saying happy International Women's Day and may God continue to guide and bless us. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Hippolyte. And um, some of you may not know, but Honorable Hippolyte herself is an entrepreneur businesswoman. She has a, a flower farm. Um, and again, that's really great, great business. Um, when we left for the break, we were talking about some of the challenges and uh, Shondell, I know you, you spoke about your son, and again, men, you told him to put it in the fridge, he put it in, <laughs> he put it in the cupboard. Um, but how have you, as a mom, a mother of three, um, handled motherhood and uh, managing your business? Because um, I know my, you know my mother, she's a businesswoman too, I call her Monica, <laughs> that's not her name. <laughs> um, you know, we were very much a part of a business. She made tamarind balls, so I had to peel tamarind. My brother had to grate coconut. So um, how have your children really stepped in in terms of assisting in the business, and how have you made the time to be a great mom and a successful businesswoman? First of all, I, I think um, it may not fit in for you, but it does for me. Determination is the word. Um, I was a teenage a teenager when I got pregnant. Um, so I had, I had something to prove. Mm. I was very determined. Um, I wanted my parents, my family, um, everybody around me to see that, not because I got pregnant as a teenager, that life stops. So I really pushed and put myself out there to do my best every single time but I will not say I am lucky but because I, I work very hard but I had I had a community behind me and when I say a community I don't mean where I grew up um, people I worked with my family my friends were really supportive because I did so much um, today when I sit down and I look back, I ask myself the question, girl, how did you do that? <laughs> because I worked at a gas station, gas station on the Chaussee Road for 16 years. While I was there, I took up a job at SNA Insurance Brokers. I did courier services for them. And then, then I heard of a job, um, a lady who, a family, wanted somebody to take care of their mother at night just to sleep with her. And I was earning $800 a month to sleep there. So I did that. So I worked at the gas station. I worked with Chef Pat's Catering. <laughs> I worked with s and Insurance Brokers. I sold chips at the time to only MNC, um, all five stores nice. at the time. Um, and it balanced off because my parents were parenting my children. Um, I was making enough money to give everybody a phone. Um, <laughs> my daughter learned to pray with a doll. I bought a doll for her that prayed with her at night. Um, I would be on the phone at 7 o'clock to ensure everybody was watching the news. And then in the morning during breakfast time, everybody would have to give me a piece of the news because um, I wanted them to, to sync with what was happening. So I parented my kids from work. I, I broke a lot of rules at work because I wasn't supposed to be on the phone, but I, I had to be there for my kids. Even though my parents were there, there are certain things I ensured they did, like praying, watching the news, doing their homework, take a photo and send to me, let me see what you've done. So. They knew, and my daughter was a little parrot too. She, she, she told me what the boys <laughs> did. <laughs> so um, I was privileged mm -hmm. to have good friends, good family, good support. Um, I was able to do all these things because when I leave work at 8 p.m. at the time, it was 8 p.m., I leave work at 8 p.m. at the gas station, a friend would pick me up, drop me to the other job, and it just worked out so smoothly. 
um, I had great people in my life. And, and thank God for that. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, to you, Christine, I know you, you spoke about the transition that you had to make after 45 years of your career as a dancer, as a teacher. Um, and uh, I know sometimes our society can be a bit cruel in terms of ageism, in terms of, but she's been there. Everybody knows um, <laughs> Auntie Christine, uh, yeah. and she wants to do again. How have you navigated um, that, or if at all you've had to navigate that sort of transition from a 45-year career and now, you know, brand new bags across the world? Well, the transition was difficult. <laughs> it was difficult. Um, you always feel like you have to prove yourself because age seems to be a factor for me because I might be looking young and everybody goes, but, but I'm, I'm almost 60 years old. You understand? So, <laughs> so age always seemed to be a factor for me in, in that reference. But um, I have worked really, really hard to, to be where I am with the bags right now. Um, when the opportunity came for me to get the bags out there, I was not in St. Lucia because I was so angry with, this, with the system and where I was because I always, my life was always dance. So leaving and moving from that trans transition from being a dancer to a designer was difficult. I was in Canada at the time and I got the call saying, that was from Sea Island Cotton Shop saying that we want you in the shop. We want Christy Creations brand in the shop. And uh, I didn't know what to do at the time. I, it, I was like, okay, when I get back to St. Lucia, how am I going to make this happen? I, I, it was a hobby, so I didn't tell myself I'm going to be a bag designer. Um, my husband has been that support for me. Um, but everything that I've done so far for that transition, my husband has been there. Um, I've been a lot of help from the family, my children, because when you're making bags, it means you are up all night making bags. I have to ensure that going through that tran transition, that the product is good. It is good. And if I'm going to sell bags, and if I'm going to be a bag designer or jewelry designer, it has to be something that has to be really, really good. So I, I, I took the, the leap of faith. I took that leap of faith, and I'm happy that I did it. I'm happy that it is paying off for me right now, and I will not stop working harder. You know, and yes, I might be looking, I might be looking not young, but it has been a long journey to get where I am today. And it's not easy. Sleepless nights, yeah. I stay up until four, five o'clock in the morning making bags because I have to make sure that my production is excellent and that when it gets out there, people are happy with the product. The support with my children, I have three children. People don't know that. I have three beautiful kids and my husband never goes to bed until I go to bed. So if, wow. I'm, if I'm making bags until 6 o'clock in the morning, he sits there until 6 in the morning, mm -hmm. until my production is done. So I am grateful for that. So it's hard work, but people hard work pays off. Oh, fantastic. It does pay off. Fantastic. And Lisa, I know earlier on you mentioned also about your husband's assistant um, to you. How, what do you feel is um, for you that having that sort of support. I know um, Shonda spoke about having the community, having her, her parents, mm -hmm. and for you, what kind of support have you been able to garner and not taking any of anything away from you mm -hmm. for you know, your desire, your leap of faith, but how has support your village, what has your village been like? So my village is what have me here today, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, so my clients, for mm -hmm. one, my husband, um, they saw the potential in me. I can start from when I was working at Sandals. I've, I've been in the industry for over 21 years. Yeah. So I worked with Sandals, one, and was there, that's why I transitioned into massage therapy. It was Marva Eugene at the time who saw my, my, my love for massage therapy. And she's like, Mister, you should go and get your certification in massage therapy. I said, nah, I'm a nail technician. I'll just stick to doing nails and pedicures. She said, no, 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 no. You're very good at doing the massages. Go and do the massage course. So that summer, Karen, Karen Sprung came from Red Lane Span, and she's the one who, she, I did her pedicure, and I did a foot massage for her, and she's like, why you didn't sign up for the massage therapy course? I tell her, I want to be a massage therapist, sir. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
She said, are you sure? I said, oh, no. And she said, she's like, Mr. Dudokos. So I went ahead and I, I did it. I got certified in, back in 2004, or 2005, there about. And um, yeah, and I fell into, in love with massaging. I love the, the look on my client's face after getting the massage done, the relief. The, the release of stress mm -hmm. and the comfort that they get coming to me to get the massages done and nails and pedicures which is everything but um this is my support my support is my most of my clients they don't want to give me that push to open to be honest because as i said i was doing house to house yes. going to everybody home and doing the pedicures the massages carrying my tables all over the place um it was really challenging back in 2020 because you know money was tight and um we were trying to, I have three children as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have two boys and a girl. Um, yeah. And in 2019, I had my last son, so he's five. And in 2020, it was only a year and some. So it was hard. It was really, really hard um, starting off. And with the support of my husband, being the one home with the children, and as I building and changing and trying to figure out what I want, how I want the place to be, um, he helped me financially. He helped me emotionally. You tell me, Lisa, calm down, because I'm, a, I'm, I'm somebody I'm always in my head. <laughs> so I think a lot and I overthink things. So he's like, Lisa, relax. Write what you want to do. Make sure you make sure make your goals. And then it, it just took, it took a while. But I can tell you, if it was not for my clients, my clients have had over 20 years. So some have been with me for 20 years since I started. Some just started with me. Some started in 2020. And it's, it's I can tell you. The love of my clients and the love of my husband is what have me here today. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very grateful. Fantastic, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that your business comes with tools um, and very expensive ones at that. Yes. <laughs> um, has, has there been any support that, whether it be exposing you to the government, and I know you mentioned your, your husband mm -hmm. and probably, not probably, definitely your own resources mm -hmm. into the business. How, what kind of support have you been able um, to, to get and was it easy? What, what was the process like? Okay, so financially, when I went to the bank, <laughs> um, when I went to the bank in 2021, I was trying to um, expand, not expand, but I wanted to get some new, I wanted to get a new massage table mm -hmm. and I wanted to get a few other things and um, go to the bank, the bank asked me for a guarant three guarantors, <laughs> The same amount of money I'm asking for, they asked me to deposit. I'm like, if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't come to you. So I said, if I had that amount of money, I wouldn't come to you. I'd just use my own money to, to do what I needed to do. And she, well, the, the loans officer was like, well, that's what we need. And then um, I went to other lending facilities, mm -hmm. including the, the credit unions and stuff. And it was really, really hard. I mean, finance to get financial assistance here as an entrepreneur, it's really hard. They needed a background check, they needed you to do a financials for the past last year and the financials for the coming year. So I obviously I needed an accountant to do so. And um, it was hard. But with the MSME program, I can tell you. <laughs> In 2023, when, the, um, when I got the email and I got the message, I wasn't, I honestly did not look at it. I'm being very, very honest. I did not look at it. But I had a client who came in and she told me, Lisa, you heard about the MSME program? I said, yeah, I saw it. I got an email from Ministry of Commerce and I just brushed it off. She's like, you don't want to do it? I said, I don't know. <laughs> she told me, Lisa, try. So I said, okay, I'll try. And then I did that. And to tell you the truth, I moved from a small space to a now big space. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> And it's everything I had in my head that mm -hmm. I wanted to do that I'm doing now. So I, now I have a hairdresser, I do nails, I do massages, I do waxing. And I'm now in collaboration with um, Taken Spa. Her name is Janice Charmine. She does the waxing for me here. And um, it's, it's exactly what I want to do. And I'm looking forward to the future. Okay, Mona Lisa. <laughs> wow. Um, that is really fantastic. That, yes. That's fantastic. Um, because we have um, one minute left in this segment, I will stick a pin and we'll take a break and um, return to here. I mean, it's ladies, we only have 20 more minutes left. <laughs> so um, we'll take a break and we'll be right back.
Export St. Lucia is the National Trade Export and Promotion Agency of the Government of St. Lucia. By spearheading the island's national export development efforts, we work toward continuously increasing the value and volume of St. Lucian exports. At Export St. Lucia, our team of qualified trade professionals promotes and expands the presence of St. Lucian goods and services across the globe. We offer a range of services including the provision of up-to-date trade information, trade promotion and export marketing, export facilitation and export development support. We provide invaluable support to our clients including small and micro enterprises at absolutely no cost. After all, through our work, the agency aims to increase the profitability and sustainability of St. Lucian businesses. Export St. Lucia is making a direct and tangible contribution to St. Lucia's economy. Over the past 10 years, Export St. Lucia has transformed the trajectory of several businesses founded by passionate entrepreneurs with the zeal to achieve more. We look forward to each new export and the opportunity to introduce a wider audience to top quality, authentic St. Lucian products. This is why we embrace the philosophy of excellence at home and abroad. For more information, contact us at info at exportsaintlucia.org or call 1-758-468-2145. Welcome back to our panel discussion for International Women's Day, Invest in Women Accelerates Progress. Um, we just left off with Mona Lisa um, giving us this really inspiring um, testimony of her growth, um, of the financial difficulties that she went through, and ultimately accessing the MSME loan grant facility by the Ministry of Commerce, and I know that facility guarantees you a 70% grant and 30% loan. Um, but now we have with us Miss Janita Rigoberto from Rigo's Naturals. So can you tell us about your endeavors? Okay. My name is Jennifer Rigoberto, owner and founder of Rigo Doll Spice. Now most people know me as Rigo Doll Spice. Oh. But moving forward, the new name is Rigo's Natural. Right. <laughs> okay. Like because that. when I started this business, like I started dressing dolls with dry leaves. Mm -hmm. So that's why I end up with that name, Rigo Doll Spice. Okay. Yeah. So, so could you tell us a little about your business then? Well, I started this business in for the past, about uh, eight years or nine years now, mm -hmm. since I'm into it. But when I started, after I left school, I was working in a for a short period of time in a slaughterhouse with my grandmother at Union, mm -hmm. where they used to slaughter chicken. But it was for a short space of time. So I saw this young lady had a doll selling, dressed out with ribbons and cloche. Mm -hmm. So since I'm somebody have a lot of, I'm very talented, I know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I say, okay, yeah. I'll buy that doll. I bought that doll for $20. So I bought that doll home. And I say, you see, my, you see what I'll do? I'll redo it. I'll redesign it. Mm -hmm. So I decide to do that. So I say, okay, I'll try something new. So at the time, I bought the doll and I brought it home. I didn't start on it right away. So a few years down the road, I went and worked with my husband in construction. I say, actually, half of my life, administration parts, that's what I'm handling. And while working with him on construction side, sometimes I'll say, okay, in between, I'll hold the doll with me. <laughs> I'll dress the doll with dry leaves. Most time when they cut the bamboo to do props, I'll take the leaves, I'll dress dolls with dry leaves, mango, sour soap leaf, I'll incorporate the sour soap leaf with the madras on construction sites <laughs> while the men out there working. <laughs> so because I'm a very strong-headed woman. So I say, okay. So in between, I'm doing my thing. So when I read home, I said to myself, okay, you know what to do? Try something else. So I decide, after having the market for the dollar for about for five years, I say, I really don't have the taste for it again. So I'll leave it alone. So I went in the, I work in the construction, not sorry, I work in the hotel industry for a few years. I work in a restaurant for five, for eight years. And a few years down the road, my husband tell me, you know what happened? You should come and work with me. So I went to the 
chef at the time I was working in the rest in the hotel. I said, Chef, can I get six months time off? He said, Janitor, for what? I said, I just need six months time off. I have another mission to work on. So he said to me, Well, if so, I'll not trust you. Because when you come back, you will want another six months again. <laughs> I said, okay, but he tell me it's okay. So I took the six month time off and I went and looked with my husband up to a day like today. I never regret, never regret. Just to see mother of two, you have to get up early, even though it's raining or not. Sunday, holiday, you pass in. I have to be walking down on the sun weekend. Sometimes early morning, I have to leave home. And I'm seeing like some people are there home and you're saying, what? It's not an easy task, but I say, okay, be focused, the rest will follow. So, okay, I went and with him, and uh, today, financially, he's supporting me when he can, because with construction, it have its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, like, since I know construction have its ups and downs, what else I'll do? So I decide to um, stop the dolls, and I say, okay, what I'll do, my grandmother used to plant ginger, turmeric, she was a garden person. So I say, okay, what I'll do, I'll uh, take, I dig some ginger roots, some turmeric roots, and I grate it, I dried it, and I grind it. So when I grind it, I give it to a few friends to sample, so I got good feedback on that. So I say, what else I'll do? I say, okay. Um, I order 100 tea bags, and I tried it in the tea bag forms. So when I tried into tea bag forms, I gave it out to sample, I got good reviews. So I say, well, it seems I'm doing something good. Mm. So I said, okay. So what I did, after I buy the 100 tea bags, I gave it out to sample. So I reorder 500. So Ooh. in ordering 500 again, so I say, okay. After I try the turmeric, I try the ginger, let me try the sour soap leaf, I'll try the rosemary into powder form and then put it in tea bag as well. So I said, okay, I tried it. I say, let me take it into Massey. So when I took it to Massey for them to sample and look at the packaging, they told me, well, they'll get back to me. So a couple of days after that, they did get back to me and they told me, well, uh, management have approved it. So the other flavors, I have bring it to them. So what I did, so they entered it in the, the system and they told me, well, okay. So they told me what outlets for them to start to deliver because at the end of the day, sometimes not all outlets, they'll approve it too. But they are approving all the outlets. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, at that time, they are approving all the outlets. And I said, okay. And then uh, from there, I started supplying all the Massey outlets. So a couple years after that, I started with the shakers, the spice shakers. That okay. I have the tea form and I have the powder form. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting good reviews about that. Fantastic. Yeah, and up to what they like today, because as I was saying previously in the... Um, sorry, when I was saying, when they had the, the handover for the new packaging, I remember clearly when I just started with my clear pouch, I remember one year I went in free outlets, free Massey outlets, and took out all the cinnamon packaging on the shelf. Because at the time I wasn't comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, like, I cannot do otherwise, you know? So I'm saying to myself, Lord, what I'll do, what I'll do. Now, when I go and take it out on the shelf, I repackage in it. Now, when, you read, when I read home, you know, the tears are running, but nobody not seen it. <laughs> so, I repackage it, and I bring it back on the shelf, and at the end of the day, it's a course. Yes. It's a course. You cannot reuse the label, you cannot reuse the packaging, and I'm seeing, I say, moving forward, girl, you have to be strong. So, I remember one year, I went to a mini trade show at the financial center, Point Seraphin, and one guy from Commerce was there. And when he looked at my packaging, because before I had the shakers, he looked at my um, cinnamon, the turmeric, the bay leaf, the sour powder, the packaging I had it in. I had it in a screw tight mm -hmm. container, I bought that SNS. And he said to me, but that packaging really looking like a hair product. I said, oh my <laughs> God. Oh. I said, but anyway, moving forward is a lesson. A lesson. Very it's a nice. lesson. So I went online, I did some research. And uh, I end up getting the shakers on Alibaba. Mm -hmm. And then I messaged the supplier, and he responded to me. And from now up to what they like today, that's what I'm Lovely. using. So, yeah. and you, you said that you received some.
packaging, some branding yeah, from branding Export packaging. St. Lucia. Was that? Was that from Export St. Lucia? Yeah, it and was from you... Export St. Lucia. This oh. packaging was from Export St. Lucia because I'm somebody. I'm always at Export St. Lucia office, you know. You, can <laughs> swear, you will swear I have a chair there, you know. <laughs> yeah. They should give you yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> and the moment I step in, everybody, can I help you? Can I assist you? One thing we've just talked about Export St. Lucia. Lucia. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Once you see, I open the door and you hear about the, about the um, belt do thing. You see that one standing. Can I help? Can I assist? Yeah, I like that about them. Very nice. So when I got this packaging from Export St. Lucia, ITC and the government of St. Lucia, mm -hmm. I said, Lord, you just have to be strong, patient, mm -hmm. patient, mm -hmm. and uh, because if it was, if I didn't have the passion in what I do, I already give up. Long time, I already give up. Trust me, but I'm somebody, I'm very, I have a strong belief, like, um, the passion I have is not something I just adopt. You know, it's something from small, I have it in me, growing up with it. Yeah, very growing nice. up with it, yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah. um, and Priya, could you, for us, how, I know you spoke very passionately about, you know, being from Viewfort. Um, how have you been able to build your business, expand, I guess, to, to the island? Um, how have you been able to use any technology within, uh, I, I heard my lady telling me she went on Alibaba, she did her research. <laughs> uh, how has technology played a, a part in your, the growth of your business? Technology has played a very good part in mm -hmm. my business because starting off, um, I was not that, to say, interested too much in being the face of my business or posting mm -hmm. on Facebook. I would say thank you to my little brother. He's the technical genius. He's <laughs> always, and he always pushed me and tell me, um, I have to post. Or he would, I would move the photos, he would be the one doing his, his background work and posting for me, um, sending it to friends, and they would be posting on Facebook, on the page. Um, this has been the way I started first off with my business in posting mm -hmm. and having friends who abroad, who went to school with me, or persons who know me from the community would post and said that um, I'm, ba I'm baking, I'm doing um, different things. So technology have helped me. And when technology helped me, a friend of mine called me and told me, he know that I'm somebody who is very um, driven for what I want. I have potential. Why don't I face a financial institution? I said, boy, <laughs> a young person <laughs> with not that much of a background of having that much of a savings mm -hmm. because everything I make, I invested back in the business to buy something else mm -hmm. to add to my business. My first experience was going to the credit union because that's why I opened my first business account. And when I went, the gentleman looked at me and he, he asked me what's my age because you see that's a young person in the early 20s coming to the financial institution and um, he told me the list of things I would need when I looked I said going to my mother going to my father which one will sign for me and uh, when I went back they told me they could not assist me mm -hmm. with the financial background, the money they have and they have to spend back. The bank said they would not be good guarantors. So I said, okay, there must be somebody that will help me. I went home, sat, calculate, what would I do? How would I get that support? Then I went to my partner at home and he told me, He's going to sign for me. He was a business person himself in the horse industry. And uh, when he went to the bank, he knew the gentleman. He said to him, um, okay, I think you can sign for her, but not for the amount she wants. She has to start at 1,005. I said, 1,005? What that's doing for me? <laughs> <laughs> then he said, that's what we can give. I said, no problem, I'll make it work. Mm -hmm. 
So with that thousand five, I bought puns, cake and cake puns, and what I did was the company had the uh, it was some activity on for Creole Day. I baked the cakes, the cupcakes, and I gave it to them. That's my way of saying thank you. You helped me in a bit. And they told me, what's your price? I said, no, that's okay. I'm blessed. Blessings will come. And through that, I have had a relationship with them. And the financial institutions always tell me, he's no longer working there, but he always calls me and tells me, there's an opportunity. He would call persons overseas. My cake would be in the States, and I'm in St. Louis, and I don't know where the cake <laughs> is looking. At. And mm -hmm. I would say from... Farmers Credit Union was where I started with that first help they gave me. And they have looked for clients for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then this have helped me. And when I said, okay, that's not the only way, I went into working part-time. So no matter I have a business, I said to make money to put into my business, I'm going to work for somebody, but not for long. So every time I go working for a company, I work and invest in my business. Mm -hmm. so I buy equipment. I buy something I see that is in need. I look at my market, what is needed, what's the different styles, different techniques. And uh, I said, OK, last year, when uh, youth economy came around, somebody I baked for and plan a birthday party was in the States. And she started filling up the form for me. For you. <laughs> she don't know anything about me that much. And then she called me and told me, Kri, I saw something. They say it's youth, but I think you you will get through. And uh, she said to me again, Kri, I could not complete it. I started it for you, but do it. I said, youth economy. Okay, I think about it. I stayed about a whole month before even opening the form that she sent me the link. And uh, I did afterwards. And in my, the back of my head was, I've never gotten that assistance. So, mm -hmm. but I will just take a shot. When I got this call, and then the person tell me, calling from Youth Economy, and her name is Janine. I said, Youth Economy. And asked me the question, did I fill the form? I said, yes, I did. And uh, she told me the steps, they're going to call me. And I kept, I had the phone by me, like I was excited for the first time. I'm going to get something that I've worked hard for. I'm going to get this help. And uh, I must say, with Youth Economy last year, when I got that first phone call, I think that's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I have, yes, Youth Economy have helped me a lot. And in saying that, when I said Youth Economy helped me a lot was, I went through a phase last year in March when this incident happened in Viewfort. And it was just after Women's Day when I got that call, the person who was the person who called me to tell me I would make it. Since I got that call, I'll make it. Her life was cut short. So I said to myself, my cousin is gone. And she had just spoken to me the same day to tell me I would make it. It will work. There is no hope in that. Because I lost some hope, some faith in that, losing this person. And uh, when I got the call back from Youth Economy, this was what who gave me that drive back, gave me that build back that you will make it, you will get there. And every single course, every single advertisement post I see Youth Economy have, I would tell a friend, tell somebody, and I would apply for it, for this stuff. Or sometimes I'll say, I'll give somebody else a chance and let them know about it. And I would say, Working with Youth Economy, they've been my support system, I would say, from last year, is 
magnificent for me. Um, working with them, with the, gr the trainings I have gotten, the funding I've gotten, buying new stuff for my business is very helpful to me. Um, also, they, I signed up for a mentorship program. And I said, but they said you have to do the business planning before you get into mentorship. <laughs> so let me see if it will. You know, it was, mm -hmm. for me, it was like, let me see if, if I will get through. And when I got through, I would see, when I heard everybody say the mentor contacted them, and I said to myself, my mentor have not contacted me. <laughs> I said, okay, he will. I knew who he was, but the day for me to meet him, I could not. And when he contacted me, he told me his name and everything. I said, okay, he works for Expo St. Lucia. So that <laughs> might be one way for me to start off exporting awesome. my cakes, pastries, and stuff. But in meeting my mentor and meeting with him once a week, talking to him on the phone, we became buddies. It became a, ho a friend to me, not just a mentor. And in talking, he used to tell me, Korea, you have a lot of other products you do, not just your cakes. Why don't you market everything? And working with him, he got to know I'm into honey. And he told me, how do you have time to do all these things? <laughs> and I would say my mentor, Jason Badal, was the one who gave me a push in exporting. I export honey oh, nice. cream, yes. Nice. Uh, and when he told me, um, there's an MSME loan, did you apply? I tell him, yes, I applied, but you already know. <laughs> um, I don't have the name as yet, but I think I will. That's what it is. I think I will. He said, well, I will, I will apply for you. I said, no, I have done it and uh, I've seen I was not too I would say invested too much in having the high hope that the MSME loan would come my way because I was more into the youth economy I was doing trainings and stuff with them when they called me in November called me to call in from Ministry of Commerce because I signed up to do the Taiwanese trade show they told me, well, your name came up for the MSME loan, but the equipment that you want, you won't be getting all of them. We'll be picking out a few that we can help you with. I told them, okay, not a problem. It's still a help for me. Mm -hmm. um, when they called, um, I told them I'm on my way to a meeting, but I will be in Castries. Six o'clock, I think I was. I didn't sleep, so six o'clock I was already <laughs> in Castries. Came to the office, <laughs> went to what, doing what I have to do, and back on a bus to Viewfort because I had an order to do some meals. And then they called me back, tell me what we told you were giving is not that we're going to give you anymore. We have to remove on the equipment. I told them that's not a problem. It's it's okay. Assistance. It's good. When um, they told me, well, we will call you back to let you know if um, the equipments are still available for you. I told them that's not a problem. When the company called and told me the stove and things were not there, I said, okay. So with both of them, they've been very helpful, but youth economy and exports <laughs> in Russia, I must say. Thank you for that, Kriya. And um, we're due for a break, so um, please stay tuned as we wrap up our International Day Women's Panel. Export St. Lucia is the National Trade Export and Promotion Agency of the Government of St. Lucia. By spearheading the island's national export development efforts, we work toward continuously increasing the value and volume of St. Lucian exports. At Export St. Lucia, our team of qualified trade professionals promotes and expands the presence of St. Lucian goods and services across the globe. 
We offer a range of services including the provision of up-to-date trade information, trade promotion and export marketing, export facilitation and export development support. We provide invaluable support to our clients including small and micro enterprises at absolutely no cost. After all, through our work, the agency aims to increase the profitability and sustainability of St. Lucian businesses. Export St. Lucia is making a direct and tangible contribution to St. Lucia's economy. Over the past 10 years, Export St. Lucia has transformed the trajectory of several businesses founded by passionate entrepreneurs with the zeal to achieve more. We look forward to each new export and the opportunity to introduce a wider audience to top quality, authentic St. Lucian products. This is why we embrace the philosophy of excellence at home and abroad. For more information, contact us at info at exportsaintlucia.org or call 1-758-468-2145. Welcome back, St. Lucia, and um, unfortunately, we have to wrap up today's International Women's Day panel, Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress, and I would just give uh, everyone two minutes, a two-minute opportunity to really um, maybe use the, the time to encourage someone or promote your business, whichever, or both. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start with you, Christine. Well, before I promote my business, I need to say also thank you to Export St. Mm. Lucia because um, they assisted me internationally Ooh. with okay. the business, Christy Creations, the brand, because um, a couple of years ago they did do a survey on the brand, which helped me today for the brand to expand oh, to other lovely. countries. Wow. Um, I am grateful because one, my, ba my brand has expanded to Sea Island Cotton Shop, mm -hmm. um, Howerton Estate, Ladera, um, the one in Sufre, <laughs> Jade Mountain. Mountain. Yes, and I, I always keep in touch with Export Central to let them know what's happening. And they have always made sure whether I'm traveling, whether I'm going to represent St. Lucia in fashion shows, that they give the full support. And I want to thank Export Central. Um, in closing, what I'm doing right now, I'm expanding the business at home because my business is at home. I have decided to invest in, a, in my own art workshop. So, which will be opening soon because I do a show every single year. That's my bag seven. It will be at ho in my own space. I'm using that money to develop my own atelier. Yeah. So, my clients will feel very comfortable when they come home to get the best of the brand. So, that will be opening soon. Fantastic. So, thank you, Export Senator, for your, your love. And I, I look forward to continue working with oh, Export Thank Senator. you. Very nice. Chandel. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like Christine, um, I think the brand Abby is, Abby's is very much out there in the public domain. Um, so I don't want to talk too much about the business now. I would like to thank my family, Export St. Lucia, oh, yes. the Ministry of Commerce, the ITC, for really making my dream come true. I. I'm actually almost at the end of the tunnel, sort of, with the help of the ITC Export St. Lucia, who is always, listen, my printer went down, and I would call Mr. John and say, you know, I have something to print. Come, come, girl, you can get, and it's done. So they are there to support, and that is really great for me. Um, I have two great opportunities coming up. Next week, Tuesday, I leave for Washington, D.C., where I am going to be visiting the Ministry of Commerce in Washington. Um, we are going to be having a two-day conference. I think that's a great opportunity for my business. Um, that was done with the Ministry of Commerce and the OAS. Okay. Um, I return on the 15th, and then I'm off to Dubai on the 18th of this month as well, where I, in, where I attend the International Women's Conference. Um, this one is big. This one, 
was done with the UN women, and the challenge here is to return to St. Lucia and mentor um, young women. So this is what this initiative is about, and I have chosen the youth economy to give back. Oh, very so, lovely. Um, <laughs> so um, for those of you young people out there, I see Sir for Lewis coming to college there. Um, a dream is not a dream if you don't wake up and step out. If you stay in bed, your dream is not going to be realized. Mm -hmm. So you need to get up every single day, whether it rains, whether it pours, whether there's lightning and thunder, whether you stayed up all night and couldn't sleep for whatever reason, when 5.30 strikes the clock, get up and get out. That's the only way <laughs> your dream is going to be realized. And today I sit here confidently, simply because I became pregnant as a teenager and I had something to prove since then <laughs> 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 that I can do it and I am doing it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And um, St. Lucia, unfortunately, that is all the time we have, but I do encourage you to follow each and every business here. Probably a good place to start off is the Export St. Lucia Facebook and Instagram um, social media accounts and also exportstlucia.org. Um, and you can find, I know, most of these businesses. And also, how can I forget? The Prime Minister's baby, Youth Economy, um, <laughs> youtheconomy.lc on, um, on the internet, and also Youth Economy St. Lucia on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you again for joining us for this International Women's Day panel. And thank you to you lovely thank ladies you so for, you know, again, <laughs> inspiring me and bringing me through my journey too <laughs> as, as an entrepreneur and a, I know that it's, it's, it's nothing easy, but thank you, St. Lucia, and um, all the best um, for International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you.